Amplifier. This is a Pile PWMA 930 IBT. I wanted to get something I could go and play live music outdoors with and I saw some pretty cool amplifiers online that were on to about $500 and I was almost set to buy them but I saw this for about $150. Now it may not be amazing, I'm not sure yet, I haven't tried it out, but for $150 I felt like I couldn't go too far wrong. So it was a good cheap experiment. What I was looking for really was something that would take both guitar and vocals. I'm gonna go play with my friend over at Demonic Sweaters, Justin. He's got his portable drum kit ready to go and I'm gonna turn up with the amp and we're gonna see how we get on. So I needed something that was gonna handle two inputs, mic and guitar, and ideally two vocals because Justin does some vocals on some of his songs too. So we're gonna try to do one or two of his songs too. So what you'll notice with this guy is this has two mic inputs. It also has a guitar input. It's got a couple of other inputs. There's, there's a cable up top here and a connector for an iPod or iPhone. You can also connect your phone via Bluetooth. There's an iPod MP3 player input here. So there's a couple of different ways that you can get your iPod, or your, your MP3 player, or your phone, or any other music input into the system. But really, my key need here is guitar and vocals. The unit says it's 600 watts. I'm a bit skeptical that something this small can actually run to 600 watts, but I'm gonna test it out and see how it goes. It comes with a wireless microphone included, and you have to supply two AA batteries for that and it feels kind of flimsy and light, especially compared to something a bit more standard. But having tried it out, it seems to work just fine. What I do notice is that set at the same volume level, this Ultra Voice XM8500 cheap enough microphone cost about $20, $25, I think. This is already picking up a lot better volume input than the wireless mic. So I may not use the wireless mic. Thankfully, I have one of these adapters so I can use a standard mic cable and just plug this directly into the input here. This does not come included with the unit. Apparently, there's a couple of other things that were supposed to come included too. A quarter inch aux audio cable adapter, a battery terminal alligator charge clip, I'm not even sure what that is, and an RCA connector cable. Those three didn't come in the box. And also I noticed there was no manual or instructions that came with the unit too. And I begin to wonder whether this was bought and then returned by somebody who felt it wasn't up to standard or wasn't up to their needs. They got their money back, but maybe they forgot to put some of the bits and pieces or the accessories in the box when they shipped it back. I'm not too concerned because as I said, it's 150 bucks or less. And for my needs, I think it has enough included for me to test out and see whether it works or not. If this just sucks and the quality is awful at the volumes I wanna use it at, then I may return it. I'm trying to invest in upgrading to something better. Charge plug is included. You just plug this into the wall and it charges up. It does not say how long the battery takes to charge but it says that the full runtime is about three hours. I think it would be helpful if it said how long it would take to fully charge. It does say charge every one to two months for eight to 10 hours. So I think a complete total recharge every couple of months to keep it fully maintained of eight to 10 hours, that's an indication of how long the battery might take to charge if you've been using it and it's not fully drained. So uh, once you buy one of these, you might want to just plug it in and leave it for the full day. It says that the red LED should, should begin to flash when the battery is nearly charged and when it's fully charged, the indicator should go off. Not sure I've seen that activity. I saw it maybe flickering, flashing, not really sure what exactly I'm supposed to look for there. So I'm gonna take this outdoors with a portable drum kit set up a mic and a guitar and just put that through it and see what it sounds like in public. But I'll test it inside in the apartment too and just see what it sounds like with both of those inputs going in. The first thing I do notice when you turn it on is that there's a definite hiss. Even with nothing plugged in, there's a definite hiss. One, two, one, two, one, two. But it works pretty well. It has treble and bass knobs and an echo. Not sure why you want to use the echo but maybe with just a little touch of echo just to make it sound almost like reverb. Both of these microphones are at the same volume level. Here's the wireless mic. 
And here's the non-wireless wired mic. And as I mentioned, the wired mic definitely has a higher input gain. So I think this is going to be a little more reliable. You also have heard the hiss there immediately. Now I'm going to put the guitar through it and see what it sounds like. One thing I'll mention is that if you use the wireless mic, then as soon as you turn that on, it runs automatically through mic input number one. And if you have a microphone using the cable input like I have here, and you plug that into input number one, and then turn on the wireless mic, both mics will go through input one. Now I'm not about to stress test that too much, but it seems to suggest that you could actually have three mics coming into this device, wireless and wired through mic one, and wired through mic two. I now have the guitar and the mic coming through here, and I'm just going to give it a little bit of a sound test. I'm going to take it out on the road tomorrow and pump the volume a bit more. I just want to get a sense for how these sound. The guitar definitely seemed a little quieter than the mic, and I think that's because my Behringer Ultra Voice mic, as I mentioned, is just a little bit louder coming through than the wireless mic. So I'm probably going to use the wired mic when I use this outdoors. So with the mic coming in a little higher, I'll probably want to pump the guitar volume up a touch just to balance them out. I did notice you can hear the echo coming through slightly. I had just a very minimal echo. I can hear that coming through. So I'm looking forward to testing this out. It's a fairly small unit. It says on the box that it's about uh, 10 and a half by 11 and 14.7 inches tall, but I think it's measuring that from the base of the amp and not the base of the wheels. This thing does have wheels on it and it has a handy handle for pulling it and wheeling it along also has a handy carry handle too for picking it up. So with the wheels that makes it even more portable and measuring from the bottom of the wheels to the top of the handle, that seems closer to about 18 inches high. Still not that much, it's a foot and a half and just a little less than a foot wide and a foot deep. So I'm excited to see what this sounds like outside. One, two, three, four. Good. I'm 
Hey, Dot. Okay. All right. Thank you. So you gotta shut it down. Yes, sir. All right. All right no problem. Yeah, sorry about that. No worries. No worries. All right. Well, it looks like we need to shut down. Can't have amplified sound. But that's total setup time to play. That's 18 minutes in total, and we got like three songs in. So I had fun. Yeah, First me gig too. Of, uh, of the pandemic for me. <laughs> we kind of figured it would be three songs. So nice work. Awesome. <laughs> well, except for getting stopped by the very friendly park ranger for using amplified sound on Pier 6 of Brooklyn Bridge Park. I think that was a pretty good successful experiment to see how good that amp is outside. We got through three songs, which was extremely fun, and I haven't played any gigs other than live stream since this whole pandemic hit. So to get outside and just play with a live drummer in person and not a live stream from my couch that was definitely satisfying. And I thought the sound quality was pretty good. Maybe didn't come across quite as well on the camera mic, but in person, it was pretty good. I could hear the drums, I could hear the guitar, I could hear the mic, everything sounded really good. And although I totally messed up some of the chords and the arrangement, the sequence of uh, Justin's song, I went too early to the chorus, missed out some chords here and there. Although I totally messed up that song, I included the footage here because I think it gives a good indication of what it sounded like to have an extra wireless mic coming through the other mic input. If we had a little more time to test, I probably would have cranked his mic input volume, but we wanted to set up and then take down pretty quickly because we knew it potentially could be a matter of time before we were stopped anyway. I think I had the guitar level at about 75% and I had the mics between 55 and 65% I wanna say. So I didn't push the thing all the way to the limit and it still, the sound quality was just fine. Look, this is not a full professional outdoor PA system but for something pretty portable and easy to use, the sound quality is more than enough. How portable is it? Well, those wheels, they do roll, but they're pretty dinky, flimsy wheels, and every time you roll over any bump or crack on the sidewalk, the thing starts to wobble, and if you're going too quickly, it's gonna to wanna to capsize, so you have to walk pretty slowly. I'm six foot tall, so maybe that's a little too tall for the handle. The handle isn't long enough, so I had to hunch down a little bit in order to reach the handle and wheel it along. That makes it a bit uncomfortable. I was carrying a gear bag on my back, guitar in one hand, and the amp wheeling it along with the handle in the other hand, and having to hunch over just makes the whole thing a little more uncomfortable, especially in 80, 85 degree New York summer heat and pretty bad humidity as well. The portability, yes, but it's a little uncomfortable. I will say that when I hit any anything other than a minor crack or depression in the pavement, especially as we were walking for a little bit and my hands were maybe a little moist from the dampness that the wheels would catch and you wouldn't necessarily be expecting it, so it would slip out of my grip. So a couple of times, the wheels of the amp caught on the pavement, the handle slipped out of my hand, and the amp hit the pavement pretty hard. So that was definitely concerning. Despite the amp taking a couple of face plants on the pavement, I just tested it out, it still works. So reasonably robust. So yes, it's portable, but it's probably more intended that you will take it out of the trunk of your car and wheel it into the backyard that you're going to play in as opposed to getting off the ferry on Pier 1 and walking 20 minutes to Pier 6 in Brooklyn, New York summer. But it's doable. All in all, for $150, you can't go far wrong. I'm looking forward to using this thing a lot more. Also, I will point out in the gig footage, you'll notice my friend Justin is using a really cool portable drum set that the kick drum and the snare essentially fit into the same bag. And then he had a small gig bag and a cymbal bag and they all fit onto a portable dolly that he was able to wheel along as well. So both of us had our portable setup. And I will include the link to Justin's video below because he actually does a really good thorough discussion of that portable drum kit if you're interested in that too. All the songs we played are available either on Justin's label or they're available on 
my band camp or iTunes or all the usual digital outlets and both of us are independent musicians and we welcome all support whether it's streaming or band camp sales or you name it. Thanks for watching the video. I hope you liked it. If you have comments or feedback or questions, include them down below in the comments. If you've used other portable gear and you got some good suggestions, by all means include those down below too. And as always, don't forget to click the subscribe button and hit the bell icon so that you're notified when I post new content. I definitely appreciate when folks click like, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks again.